Drama on the high seas. Commandos storm a ship with hundreds of passengers on board. Dead bodies were piling up, people frantically trying to stem the, the flow of blood. They said it was a peace mission bringing aid to the people of Gaza, a claim disputed by the Israelis. They're trying to, to kill each and every single one of us, and we were just defending our lives. Self-defense or excessive force? What really happened that night? It all started in the calm blue waters of the Med. But three months on, the global storm over Israel's blockade of Gaza is still continuing. Israel was accused of breaking international law by seizing a Turkish ship in an action in which nine people died. Now, Israel says they were terrorists, but Turkey insists they were innocent victims. With several inquiries underway, Panorama's Jane Corbyn has important new evidence from both sides to piece together the real story for the first time. The elite Israeli force which seized the Mavi Marmara is training for its next operation. I've had unique access to this top secret unit. Naval Commando 13 has never been filmed by the media in action before. Israel says these commandos had to fight for their lives on the ship that night. Turkey accuses Israel of an act of piracy. They called it Operation Sea Breeze, but what these Israeli naval commanders encountered on the map of Mara was anything but a breeze. It caused a storm of international condemnation. But did Israel fall into a trap? And what was the real agenda of some of those people who call themselves peace activists on board the Free Gaza flotilla? They carried metal rods, and they carried chainsaws and knives and axes, and they used all of them. These people came as peace activists, and now we're facing them as terrorists. We've got hold of new Israeli military video of the operation, and CCTV and other pictures from the ship, some seized by the Israelis, others given to us by those on board. Several of our commandos got taken. We saw people being thrown overboard, or we saw them being hit. Nine Turks died, 50 passengers were wounded, and nine Israeli soldiers. The man who carried out Israel's military investigation has spoken exclusively to Panorama. They were committed to kill and to be killed. Under this kind of circumstances, in a very complex area like a ship, the results are surprisingly low. The deaths are the surprisingly death. low. Yes. But of course that's not the way the world sees it, the, the Islamic wo world in particular. The world does not necessarily want to know what exactly happened. When the Mavi Marmara left Istanbul, its mission was to break the Israeli naval blockade of Gaza and bring aid to the Palestinian enclave. The ship sailed under the banner of the Free Gaza Movement, the largest vessel in a flotilla of six. There were 600 activists aboard, including 28 from the UK and many more from Europe. They know and the world know that we are a peaceful mission. There were TV reporters, and a camera team from a group called Cultures of Resistance making a film. Their footage is key to understanding what really happened. The media was a crucial part of the plan to focus the world's attention on the blockade. The Free Gaza coordinator on board was Lubna Musawa. Media is part of the story. Media is one of the tools that we did use to put the attention in Gaza. Our goal is to open a way to Gaza. Here in Gaza, the problem's not so much a lack of food or medicine. There's no easy access in and out, no economic life because of the Israeli embargo. Hamas, which rules here, refuses to recognize Israel's right to exist. Militants have fired thousands of rockets at civilian targets in Israel in the past few years. People are forced to recycle rubble to rebuild houses. 
Israel allows in hardly any cement and steel in case they're used to make weapons and bunkers. The Turkish government and many Turkish charities support Hamas. Whenever you go, you will find the Turkish flag everywhere. Because these people showing this appreciation for the support from Turkey, we are in a strong position of the government supporting the Palestinian. The Mavi Marmara's mission was organized by the IHH, a Turkish humanitarian organization. There were 90 IHH volunteers on board from all over Turkey. Amongst them, Fatih Kovakdan and a friend. Anyone with a conscience, not just Muslims, needed to take some aid to Gaza. There's an enforced embargo on Gaza, and I believe the whole world keeps silent about it. The IHH invited fellow Islamists from across the Arab world. Several of them made speeches against Israel on board. Then the head of the IHH, Bulent Yildirim, turned up the rhetoric. I went to talk to Mr. Yildirim at the charity's headquarters in the most Islamic area of Istanbul. The IHH isn't just known for their humanitarian work. Western authorities have accused them of having links to terrorist organizations. They strongly deny this. You said that if they, the Israelis, board the ship, we will throw them into the sea. Isn't that a provocation to be saying that to your followers on the ship? Çok doğru söyledin. Orada. I spoke correctly there. I spoke beautifully. I watched it again afterwards. Israel stole these images from us, but we're not denying it. If we organized another boat and Israel attempted to illegally invade it, we'd use our right to passive resistance. We'd throw them into the sea. The IHH has close ties to politicians and to the government in Turkey which is led by a former Islamist party. The charity bought the Mavi Marmara from a government-owned ferry company. Turkish MPs planned to join the ship. They were only warned off after diplomatic pressure from Israel. The Turkish warship was escorting this flotilla for days in a very close range. Listen to what is happening, observing of what is happening. It could not happen unless the Turkish government gave a certain green light to this kind of activity. Turkey denies accusations that it had any involvement in the Mavi Marmara's mission. On the evening of the 30th, people were settling down to sleep on the ship. Spirits were high. Mavi Marmara, you are approaching an area of hostilities. At nine o'clock, the Israeli Navy gave the first of five warnings to the flotilla to turn back. They offered to take the aid to an Israeli port and deliver it to Gaza. If you ignore this order and attempt to enter the blockaded area, the Israeli Navy will be forced to take all the necessary measures in order to enforce this blockade. The Israelis released what they said was the radio response from the flotilla. Part of it was defiant and abusive. Shut up, go back to Auschwitz. We're helping Arabs going against the US. Don't forget 9-11, guys. The recording's authenticity has provoked controversy. The flotilla's organizers insist they did not hear these comments being made. For the Israelis, it was a warning sign things wouldn't go that smoothly. The Navy commandos are highly trained, their job to intercept enemies at sea. They'd seized several ships, smuggling arms to Hamas and boats carrying aid to Gaza. There'd been little resistance so far. 
This time, the commandos received poor intelligence about what to expect on the Mavi Marmara. I spoke to a key member of the unit, the first time he's talked. We'll call him Lieutenant A. We thought that what we were going to encounter were, were a bunch of uh, people that, at the most, are, are going to sit on the floor, maybe chain themselves to the ship's railing or something like that. Certain mistakes were made by the Israeli uh, forces, both by the intelligence and by the commandos of the Navy. Uh, there was underestimation of the potential resistance on this uh, ship. On the Mavi Marmara that night, at least one man openly boasted he'd be prepared to die as a shaheed, a martyr, fighting the Israelis. If the Israelis dare and try to fight us, we get it, we're going to give them a real good fight. But if I die as a shaheed, I just want to tell my children, my wife, that I love them a lot. Their father died for a really good cause. Late that night, it was clear to the crew of the ship that a core of IHH organizers had taken control of the Mavi Marmara. Crew members later described the scene to the Israelis. <laughs> These 40 people were people who were prepared to this kind of violence and the, the rest of the people, that many of them, hundreds of them, were quite innocent people who did not have a clue that this was what was planned. Video shows IHH activists cutting metal bars from the ship's railings that night. We cut the metal bars from the ship at that moment. We didn't have many of them. If the Israelis came to the boat, we'd use them. That was our intention. The security cameras on the ship show the IHH men on the top deck with bars and wooden staves. They'd stocked up with gas masks. Bulent Yildirim, the IHH leader, was at the center of the action. A former US Marine turned activist was assigned to the second deck. His name, Ken O'Keefe. I was given the opportunity to either uh, be a part of filming or witnessing or actively defending the ship, and I made the decision to defend it. Um, Although that could lead to confrontation. Yeah, and I believe that if... Uh, th the real problem here is the occupation, the uh, blockade. That is the problem. It must end. Now, if it requires confrontation in which we use non-lethal force to defend ourselves and our mission, then so be it. Ken, who lives in London, had been involved in previous attempts to break the blockade. The Israelis say he was going to Gaza this time to train Hamas commandos. It's an out-and-out -out lie. It's absolutely ridiculous. My life is an open book, and I don't have any interest in being involved in violence unless it's purely for the purpose of self-defense. In the early hours of May the 31st, the Israeli Navy started closing in. The flotilla was still in international waters, 90 miles from Gaza. And there are three coming this way, and there's one farther away, OK? Lubna Masua was in the press room. We saw many Israeli vessels full of thousands of soldiers, very close to the ship. Helicopter up and gas bombs and sound bombs start to be thrown from everywhere. Israeli military video and audio shows that as their boats surrounded the ship, the Israelis were driven back. The security cameras and other footage from the Mavi Marmara shows men wielding bars and hoses and someone swinging a chain. Unexploded Israeli stun grenades were thrown back into the boats. 
Paintball guns were fired.